Welcome to Men's Five Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we're here to talk about what goes on in the village, you know, the township. Those <laughs> government people that make regulations, laws, and ordinances that affect you out there. That's right, Elgin. And whether you live in the village of Oxford, the village of Leonard, Addison Township, or Oxford Township, these are the people that you went and elected. And the commissions and the committees that make decisions that directly affect you, whether you chose to go to that meeting or not. The result of which it could be a taxing situation that you may have no more control over. <laughs> right. And did you ever notice in these meetings there's a lot of humor that comes uh, out of yes. these meetings? Floats to the top or yeah. sinks to the bottom, yeah. but it's all humor. Right. And you have to attend these meetings <laughs> in order to catch the humor. If not, hopefully you'll do it on this show because we present some rather interesting twists on this, don't we? Uh, so what's your latest twist? Well, I'm talking about rumors that you establish. I? Me? <laughs> Moi? <laughs> yes, you, the innocent one. Yeah, the rumor maker. Anyway, you folks will have to decipher what's reality and what is not. And if you just watch his lips move, you can pretty much determine. Watch the shock look in his face, you'll see it too. <laughs> okay, well, here we go. We've got a couple of meetings we need to cover here before the show is finished. Uh, first one is Addison Township Planning Commission meeting held on August 8th. And also another meeting held on August 8th was the Oxford Village Council. Was meeting. that an ordinary meeting or a special meeting? They've no, had a lot of those lately. No, that's an ordinary meeting, but they do have a lot of special meetings. I know that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if you were there. Just trying to keep them separate, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> but you folks want to attend these meetings, no question about it. And if you don't, mm -hmm. uh, you can actually pick up the meetings, most cases uh, on our TV program, using our website, occtv.org. Click on programs. Yes, and there they are. And you can Thanks. slice and dice by whatever you wish <laughs> yeah, using our drop down menu. You can separate reality from non reality. Well, somewhat. <laughs> more by date. <laughs> Could be. Okay, so let's talk first of all about the Addison Township Planning Commission meeting. Uh, the people serving on that board is Lawrence Smith, who's the chairperson, um, Gene uh, um, Lord or Lowart? Lord. Lord, you got it. Okay. You probably know him better than I do. That's I probably why. You know? Okay. Anyway, he's the <laughs> vice chair. Uh, Linda uh, Garrick is on that board, as well as Philip uh, Marshall, uh, Chuck Sargent, and Joe Schnorr is on that board. Oh. Everybody knows Joe. I mean, he's been around that community for since Moses, it seems wow. like. Moses? <laughs> Maybe Moses. I don't well, know. Well, I know Moses had a staff, but was he on it? He might have been. <laughs> he might have been. If, if he had a staff, Joe was probably on I it. I see. Okay. So anyway, uh, very well known throughout the community. All these people are doing, of course, a great job. It's kind of a thankless job in the fact planning commission, they have to make decisions, of course, based on ordinances and regulations, and they need to propose ordinances as well and regulations concerning, concerning zoning and so forth. So it's uh, sometimes not taken with a... Uh, a grin from some of the uh, meetings people that are live often, in the often there with township. people with hat in hand asking for oh what a variance <laughs> <laughs> and they have to leave their pitchforks and fire at the door. That's other true. Other than that, <laughs> okay. So they did the pledge, got into the preliminaries, uh, covered the agenda, they approved the agenda, pretty straightforward. Uh, they covered the minutes for uh, June thirteenth, and uh, they drafted version, I guess, two that whatever that version was but I didn't read it did you read it no okay <laughs> we'll go on then uh, public hearing number one they had several uh, hearings that were involved here but the first one is public hearing uh, number one and uh, it, it was a request from Verizon <laughs> as a special use permit uh, for the property located on 5020 uh, Hosner Road could be you a cell phone. Yep. You remember that cell phone tower that they wanted to put up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, I tell you, there's a lot of controversy over that. And I got to tell you that at this particular meeting, they were packed. I mean, wall-to-wall -wall people. Oh, well, this is the one that doesn't have support wires or or the right. triangular support. It's like a fly it's rod. A, it's a monopole type. It's monopole. Monopole. One of those guys. Just like Sheldon was trying yeah. to find on, <laughs> on Big Bang. Is he trying to find that? I don't know. Did he ever find it? Probably nope. not. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so uh, that's the type of tower that they're looking for. And they need a, re, um, need a special use permit because the ordinance requires 20 acres, you know, for such a tower to go in place. Um, and they're requesting roughly about five acres uh, to put this in. Now, these monopoles don't require as much space because, you know, if they implode internally is the concept, 
rather than fall over and hit everybody in sight. I don't think implode is the right word. How about telescope? Telescope, that's a good one. Yeah, we'll use that one. Implode implies something else. It could implode too, you don't know that. It could, could happen, you know. So anyway, um, so the citizens are concerned about that as well. And uh, a lot of questions uh, evolved around, you know, the uh, master plan uh, involving that particular area. Uh, also, the safety in terms of radiation or radio waves uh, being generated, you know, from the tower. Oh, um, yeah. Well, and what do they do? Walk around with a fluorescent lamp and see if it lights up? <laughs> they could do that. Why don't you try that tonight? Oh, yeah, know right. how it works out. Okay. Uh, it probably light up if it's nighttime <laughs> anyway. Get me out of jail. Right, too. Get you out of jail then, right? Um, but it's next to the. Um, <laughs> trying to think of the school that's next to. Um, Kingsbury. Kingsbury School. Yeah, which is actually a... Um, on Hosner Road. Yeah, on Hosner. And it's a ecological type, safe type uh, school. They teach, you know, good things about nature, right? It's a green field. It's a green field. It is a green <laughs> field. But there is a building in it, in that green field. <laughs> and it's, it's called a school, right? A school. A school. Okay. So anyway... Um, the first uh, person to speak was Jonathan Crane. He's the attorney uh, from Rochester, Michigan, that represents Verizon. And uh, he talked about the uh, monopole tower and how it was constructed. The, he did have technical people there, too, to answer questions in case the audience was interested in finding out more technical. It seems like with a single support like that, the heck of a deep base. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and actually the plans for <coughs> the base and everything are available to you, the public out there, okay. to take a look at it if you have concerns in that area. Uh, he did talk about there would be a fenced area, there would be a driveway going back and, a, and parking spaces for three uh, vehicles within that area. Got to uh, have maintenance. Yeah, and he said it's pretty much the same as St. Ad uh, or St. Addison, <laughs> as Addison Township's watershed park, where they have one over there. Oh. Similar, same thing. He said it'd be the kind, of, kind of a copy of it. Uh, so if you want to see one, go over and take a look at it, and if there's any information to contact the attorney, would be willing to answer that any kind of, of the questions. That makes for less of a visual impact, too. Right. Uh, at that point, <clears> after <throat> he spoke, uh, they asked if there were any commissioner's comments, and there were none. So then they went on with a public hearing. They opened the hearing, and um, the first person that spoke was George Butler, and he's an attorney for uh, Kingsbury School. And for the representatives in, or for the uh, residents within that area. This is not on Kingsbury's property, is it? No, but it's so close that you could breathe on him and the tower might fall over. So it's very close. I just said that as a You're rumor. You're not saying a lot for the engineering here. <laughs> <laughs> engineering is pretty good. They have not had any issues. And actually, as far as the radiation, that kind of thing, that's been discussed, you know, at the state of Michigan level. Uh, and that's not to be uh, under consideration because apparently there's hardly no radio um, radiation effect. Oh, so uh, much for the, the fluorescent power. light bulb then. Yeah. And the point <laughs> was that there's more given off by your electrical power within your home, you know, what you'd get off this. With that being said, we'll be back right after this. Yeah. Are you a movie buff? A gamer? A fan of music? Or do you just enjoy all things media? Then you should watch Media Maniacs on Monday through Friday at 3.30 and at 11.30 on the weekends, right before the all-night movies. Remember, Media Maniacs. They review everything, and they're just crazy enough to do it.
Welcome back to Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are talking about the Addison Township meeting that they had uh, concerning the <laughs> Planning Commission meeting on August 8th. And uh, <laughs> the attorney for um, Kingsbury School and the residents <coughs> within that area that are objectionable to this tower. Some of the arguments that he made was that uh, uh, a variance uh, never supports in any other uh, request. What? Um, the variance never has been supported in any other request. Now, in other words, people that have come <laughs> forward to attempt to do this in other areas has never been approved uh, as a variance. Except for the of, watershed. Be, except for, well, that watershed had <laughs> enough space to do it. Oh, okay. You know, in the watershed. But this one here, you're asking for a very small space for this to go into. It has neighbors. When the ordinance requires <laughs> 20 acres. Oh. The watershed has 20 acres or more. Okay. A lot more. So, anyway, so that point was given by him. And Addison Township is also the actual <coughs> applicant, he pointed out, and not Verizon. Because <coughs> the township <coughs> uh, is going to benefit from the financial by <coughs> putting it here. Rather I, than any other location <coughs> that it may be placed. District. <laughs> yeah, I rent district. Yeah, I... I uh, rent district, and the money then will be channeled into the uh, coffers of Addison Township. Okay, and so you can see kind of a, <laughs> a push in that direction to have it at this location from the township level. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a cemetery, I guess, adjacent to this, and he did discuss that at length, you know, that... Any that complaints there? No complaints in the cemetery. And he did point that out, no complaints. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, no complaints from the people in the cemetery. Oh. But it is uh, adjacent to the property or next to the property, which shows, you know, maybe that's the use in which the property would be better suited rather than for a tower. And that was a point I think he was trying to make. Could be wrong if, if I am. Check with him and find out, you know, the attorney, uh, George Butler. And uh, let me see. He said, is this the only location that you can put this tower? He said, the answer to that is obviously no, because there's a number of other locations that have ask or property owners have asked for this tower to be in that location. Who owns the property? Uh, the property is owned by the township, Ooh. Addison Township. That was the point I was trying to make, dude. You got it, huh? Okay, so the money will go into the township, you know, from the lease on this thing. Um, similar situations, he said, uh, in the past have always been denied, you know, even by the township. So, you know, those were points that he, uh, he made for you know, those other right. pieces of property. For other pieces of property, for <clears throat> that property even. Okay, so there were a number, a stream of people that came forward. Amanda uh, Shelton was one of them, and she lives in the area of where the tower is located, and she has uh, children at Kingsbury School. <laughs> um, she com con was concerned about the setback <laughs> requirements weren't being met according to the ordinance and several other issues, <laughs> and she just plain didn't get it. And uh, that was a point she was trying to make, but along with others. Did, she was well-spoken, did a good job. Um, another one was uh, Ron Renold, I believe his name is. And uh, he lives within about 800 feet of this location, he said. And he said he feels it's a risky location. And uh, again, risky. risky. Yeah, concerning safety, that kind of thing, that if anything, they say that the, the tower is going to uh, telescope within itself, but what if it doesn't? You know, then what? Uh, they figure that the tower will fall right over where the swing sets and the uh, the play uh, area for the kids are. Given the so, right wind. Given the right wind, yep. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so he spoke on that. And he was concerned about the ZBA, too, and making that decision to bring forward to the Planning Commission. ZBA did support the idea of putting that tower at this location. He totally disagreed with that. Uh, William Carroll was another one. Um, he was against the variance. Uh, in totality. Just a question. Yes. How much revenue would the township be expecting? Um, I, I'm not <laughs> at all sure the exact amount, but I, the figure of around 3000 something like that. A month or a year? I believe per month. And this could be a rumor. Yep. We're going to start it. Not jump you change. begin it. Right. <laughs> so it's pretty good money uh, <clears throat> for the tower. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's under a contract for a certain <laughs> period of time. You know, they have to be. Yep. Negotiate. I don't think the total amount has been negotiated with the uh, uh, Verizon people yet. They're is this going, going to be through. Verizon only or a shared tower? Well, it could be a shared tower. 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 We'll spit that one out. Hmm? But it could be. Uh, however, it could also be used for multiples. AT&T could say, well, we'd like to be on this tower as well, and they could, you know, purchase space, you know, from oh, that's what Verizon. That's I meant by shared, yeah. Yeah. So mm. that could happen. 
So anyway, so people mm -hmm. actually voiced that concern. Mm -hmm. they, they came around. They said, well, this is what Verizon <laughs> has in terms of radio signal. What if some other company comes in and their signal isn't the same, so forth. But anyway, those precautions are all taken, I think, under the contract and agreement. But <laughs> um, let me see. Tiffany Stewart was another one that spoke up. And she's a volunteer for a Kingsbury School okay. and has put a lot of effort into it. And uh, she is upset in the fact that they're doing it for profit, not considering you know the, the um, relationship to the individuals living within that area or people that send their children to the school. And there's been a number of people actually have withdrawn mm -hmm. their children from the Kingsbury School under the mm -hmm. contention that I, this tower is going I, in. I guess another question that I would have was, uh, usually you do something like this to solve a problem. What's the problem? Um, to solve a problem, you do something like what? Put a cell tower in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a problem in that they lose signal, same as they did <laughs> over on Seymour Lake over here in that particular area. Does that area apply to Oxford Kingsbury Township. School too? Uh, <clears throat> they're not really interested, they said, in terms of signal strength in that area, <laughs> but there's a number of people who are. Oh, okay. And two of the people that spoke up were Bruce Meyer Hmm. who lives just outside of Addison Township, but right on the border, and Kelly hmm. Rossner-Meyer, who also spoke um, against um, not putting the tower hmm. in. They want to have the against tower. Against not or against putting They want to have the tower in. Oh, okay. So, <clears throat> and actually Bruce Meyer did a um, substantial investigation of, of the radio waves and everything involved with this, and he came up with some pretty interesting information hmm. that, you know, you get more... Um, danger coming off your yeah. smartphone, get more off your toaster in your kitchen. I remember them putting something out there before and uh, the uh, company had to come in and sh show a like a topographic map with where the signal strength would be mm -hmm. relative to that topography. I'm sure so in their... All that study had to be done. Yeah, I'm sure in their final site plan they'll have all that information available mm -hmm. uh, if they mm -hmm. haven't already uh, <coughs> provided it. Uh, Kelly Rossner pointed out that the Seymour Lake mm. Tower that's going in there, she understands mm. where the Addison people are coming from, mm. that they don't want it there, but there are certain mm. things that have to be done, and they mm. do the best they can, you know, as, as the Planning Commission would do, and the, uh, you know, to make this yeah. usable for knew, all residents. Who knew 30 years ago that a cell tower would be a, considered to be a utility? Yeah, <laughs> who'd known? Well, that's the thing, you know? You look mm. at it, and they're selling water off the shelf. Who would have thought? <laughs> Wish I'd have thought of that one. <laughs> oh, but now you're getting back to Oxford. Yeah, we are. Okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, Verizon attorney Jonathan Crane, Crane, he spoke up again, and he said the tower is going to be safe and that kind of thing. And he uh, tried to, you know, um, limit the fears that you know the public would have. Mm. Uh, the fact of the matter is that people just do not want to have it there, and they showed out, showed up by, you know wall-to-wall -wall people to disagree with what uh, the Planning Commission had agreed to do here, and yet it appears that it's going to go forward. This is only the first um, public meeting that they're going to have. They're going to have another one. Okay. I think so there was more. no actual vote. It was more no. of uh, an, yeah, open, an open meeting for people yeah. to express their yeah. opinions. Okay. It was. So with that, we'll be talking <laughs> more when we come back okay. right after this. Canine Stray Rescue is Oxford's own local dog rescue. Each year they take in hundreds of dogs and bring them into suitable homes. A certified nonprofit organization, Canine Dog Rescue strives to give pound dogs a new leash on life. To donate, adopt, or even volunteer, Call them at 248-628-0435 or go to their website, dogsaver.org, and click on the K9 Stray Rescue League link.
Welcome back to Miss by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are talking about the Aston Township Planning Commission <laughs> meeting. And there were two other uh, items on the slate for that evening. One was the amendment of a septic uh, tank <laughs> ordinance, which, if you recall, people on the lake are required to be 100 feet back from the lake. Uh, and also not drain into the lake, of course. It's got to drain away from the lake or any other body of water. Usually that means you have an engineered system. Right. And that includes... You know, anywhere it's being close to your water well also. So anyway, so uh, the engineer system, the one that you pointed out, only requires about 50 feet. Ah. So the, the change in the ordinance is the fact that <laughs> once it's expensive. approved, <laughs> right, if it's approved and permitted by the uh, Oakland County uh, Health <laughs> Department, um, and a permit is issued uh, at that time, that there'd be no, no problems. But then you have to function kind of like a stationary RV and get pumped out from time to time. Well, some do, some don't. <laughs> or Depends get pumped up to a, yep. a main sewer system. Or you can evaporate it into the air. <laughs> Not likely. <laughs> <I don't think laughs> that, would that would be a rumor for sure. People would be hey, selling I'm supposed to start this stuff, not you. <laughs> People, all the neighbors would be selling for sale on a move. Okay. So anyway, so they did approve that uh, change. Uh, there are a couple of others. One concerns uh, construction drawings and approval by the engineer. If he approved uh, for uh, private road, for example, and it's only one road under consideration and everything met the criteria, then there's no need to, you know, for further expense of okay. this, and that would be approved. So uh, that was also granted. And uh, the last one was a definition of uh, lot sizes, uh, minimum lot size uh, listed included any portion within the public right away. Okay, anything that goes into the public right away has to be defined in terms of, uh, um, should not be used for uh, space and definition, you know, to be okay. sold. So. With that, that takes care of the Aston Township meeting, and now let's go on to the Oxford Village meeting. And we'll try to zoom through this one. Sue Basarda is the uh, president. Eric Dolan is the vice president. Maureen Helmuth serves on that board, and Tom Kennis and Dave Bailey serve on the board. Um, let me see, they have a new clerk, and her name is O'Connor, and Evan Teach is the new interim village manager. Bob Davis, who's the attorney. Replacing the previous. Sure. Interim village yep. manager. Yeah, yeah the previous. <laughs> and that one replacing the previous interim. <laughs> it goes on. Okay, so anyway, so they went through the preliminaries. They started with a prayer, which they need here badly. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then they did the pledge. And, and a wing. Uh, yeah, and, and a wing, yeah. <laughs> and uh, covered the agenda items. They had to move several items around, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of order. And uh, let me see. Uh, no presentations that evening. No public hearings. So it should go along pretty fast, right? Public non-agenda yeah, non items. Uh, Karen Fitch uh, spoke up and she says um, she has been using the community room for euchre tournaments, that kind of thing, for several years and would like to request to continue using it rather than going to the township uh, new uh, building that they built there you know, for the township. And they, uh -oh. they prefer to have it local. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a flag up. And she would like to have a key access you know, to that room um, on Thursdays from noon until 3.30 so she could continue to have these programs. And so, actually, the police... Other things notwithstanding. Yeah, right. <laughs> the police chief, um, Mr. Solwald, <coughs> who's the acting chief yet, and he should be the full-time chief, I would think, somewhere along the line here, but we'll have to see what happens. That is up to the village council to decide. Uh, but anyway, he said we could provide you with access to that room. You know, so don't, don't worry about that. We'll take care of it. Rose Bima, she said, I want to talk trash. She said, Whoa. we're not picking up the trash. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so they, they, they're missing our trash. I always like trash talking. We've changed companies, <laughs> and the company that's doing it just don't show up, or they, they scatter trash all over. So anyway, so that's an issue that they need to uh, get resolved. You know, the company has been sold to a Canadian company. So there's a transitional thing there. The company that has yep. given, given the contract right. has, has been sold after right. the contract? Absolutely. Oh. So they're, they have to concur with the contract, supposedly. But uh, I, I can tell you from uh, Oxford Lake's standpoint, after the trash trucks have gone through, I mean, they leave all <laughs> kinds of trash on the lawns. And I mean, it's been a problem. And Eric Dolan, who's the person that has hit this thing up, said, hey, we want to withhold pay payment, you know, this company. They should be given lessons in the care and feeding of garbage trucks. Right. <laughs> well, they do. <laughs> they eat a lot. They do, you know, continuously. But anyway, Eric Dolan uh, led the charge on this one, and they did approve, you know, holding, withholding the bill. 
mm -hmm. or the uh, payment of the bill. So we'll have to see what happens. Maybe they get the results out of it, and that's what he's hoping. Um, <laughs> let me see, what else? Oh, rumors. The lady stood up and she said, well, I hear rumors are going to sell our water. They said, we'll discuss that down the line. And by the way, they did. And Eric Dolan, he suggested that they not sell water and uh, that they look at some other options. One of the options would be selling the existing water to the township. The township this has to be supplied with water somehow, right? Uh huh. So working out a, an agreement this and setting a uh, committee that would talk to the township about it. Well, this, this all is generated by the fact that <clears throat> since the township started supplying certain areas of Oxford, the uh, village of Oxford now has a surplus of potential water. That's true, but there's more to it. Ooh. As uh, Commissioner Dolan mm. pointed out, he said that there's been a reduction of water usage all across the country, not just here, and it's mm. continuing to be a trend. Not um, exactly like we're in a drought. Well, for example, here in <clears throat> Oxford, he said that we, uh, we have losing roughly 48,000 ga gallons of water daily. In losing? terms of volume, yep, in terms losing. of volume sales, oh. that what we used to have. And he said that amounts to roughly 17 million gallons per year <laughs> that the village is going to continue to lose. And I said if you sell our water or have a company that bottles it, it's going to be a drop in the bucket. Was that, no before, pun was that before or after the township started supplying the water? Well, they were losing uh, customers even before that in terms of volume. That's the reason why they were looking at selling How do you lose a customer water. for water? What happens? Well, people use less water, more efficiency, you know, for uh, uh, washing machines, dishwashers, and things along that line. Uh, people are a lot more... People taking Navy showers? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I never check the Navy, you guys, and what they take showers, but... <laughs> Get wet soap off, rubs off. <laughs> one, of us, one of us apparently has. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, no, that was a, <clears throat> the contention here. And so uh, Mr. Dolan, or uh, Commissioner Dolan, felt very strongly that that would be a direction to take. <laughs> now, one thing that came up was a sign uh, ordinance involved here. <laughs> And uh, it was forwarded to the village council for approval from the planning commission. And the, the request was to have a, a 32 square foot sign, which is a, a four by eight okay. type sign. It's smaller than that right now in terms of the ordinance. But this has been something that's been going on for months, years, you know, in the works. And finally, the planning commission makes a motion <laughs> to send it to the council recommending a 32 <laughs> square foot sign. And that ought to put it to rest, right? Well, they've been looking for that for years, you know. Yeah. Well, What's the answer? Give us a sign. Well, here's the answer. <laughs> Eric Dolan says, no. He says, the signs are fine the way they are. No. He says uh, that we shouldn't change them. He said, when is it going to stop? He says, every time you turn around, he said, there's a business that wants to change the size of the sign. Pretty soon we'll have billboards on the sidewalk. <laughs> right. Well, Chuck uh, Snyder, who has a major financial interest, of course, <laughs> in the village, he stood up and he says, I don't get it. He said... <laughs> He spent so, many time, so much time, he says, with public hearings and so forth, he said in the Planning Commission, they finally come about a decision on this. They send it to the council. What do you folks do? You send it back or you, you turn it down. He said, I don't get it. <laughs> so anyway, so that was kind of an interesting outcome on that one. So they did turn down the signage. They took a vote. And actually, a couple of people that voted for the signage was, uh, um, uh, trying to think of his... Um, I went in blank. Tell me quick. Um, oh, that guy. That guy? Yeah. Dave uh, Bailey? Maureen Helmuth voted for it, and also uh, Tom Kennis oh, okay. voted for it. The other three uh, commissioners voted oh, okay. against uh, going forward with it. All that really means is in, sub in succeeding years, this will be dipped in and wrung out again. It should <laughs> be, would be, might be, and who knows. Anyway, what's going on? Well, we've only got a few meetings. On 821 at 6 o'clock, the Addison Township Board of Trustees. And at 6 o'clock that same day, uh, the Village of Oxford Downtown Development Authority. On 824... At 7 o'clock, the Oxford Township Planning Commission will be meeting. And on 828 at 4 o'clock, the Oxford Area Cable Communications meeting That's right. will occur. For you folks in this area, check out the Seymour Lake Park. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to love the tennis courts. There's lots of things going the on there. The Splash Park, the, the big jungle gym for the kids. Yeah. They, they even have, a fr they have Frisbee golf there. They do. All kinds of things going on. There's all kinds of stuff. Yep. Check it out. I'm Elgin Nichols. I'm Dave Kinney. Catch you next time right here on Minutes by Minute. See you then.